So James, you had a you had a yeah. comment. What do you want? Uh, yeah, I do have this question, um, and it, it, it is specific about you know the topic of psilocybin for grief coming up, and um, and sort of like the the maybe trying to find the common denominator in some sense of what's happening with psilocybin that leads to some sort of we'll just say you know healing response, be it depression, grief, um, dying, and so what I'm I'm curious about is where you see grief and grieving as a role or, or where you see it inside of, oh my God, let me try this question again. What role do you see grief and grieving in the larger, uh, a larger healing process with psilocybin? Just thinking that there's, there's always, I think there's always grief in there. It's interesting. It's an interesting kind of way of thinking about it because if there isn't grief in the, uh, from from what I've seen with our participants with with, uh, with with depression, there's grief for what's been lost, and grief for the for the for the traumatic experiences. But often, actually, as well, like when people feel. Um, a, a huge benefit from the psilocybin, even if there hasn't been grief so much in the actual session, there can be grief afterwards because of so much time of life that was lost because of depression. So even sometimes feeling that sense of connection and joy, there can be grief coupled with that too, because it's often coming very late in life and there's a sense of real regret. And then of course, grief coming back when the depression comes back, because one of the things I really want to talk to you, Francois, about is, you know, what we've really experienced is that the depression does come back, you know, it, it comes back for pretty much everybody. Um, and there is a lot of grief when the depression returns because they've seen what it's like and felt what it's like to not have the depression. And then, um, and then it slowly starts to come back again. So yeah, that's my little overview of grief. But I think Francoise, you probably know you have a lot more to say about this because you've been working in this for so, so much longer than me and with so many different like, varieties of people so I'd love to, to know what you think about, about. Mm -hmm. well you know uh, I, I agree with you and it's I, I'd love to talk to you more about the fact that the depression returns or what what happens in that process that's another discussion you know like okay you know that's a very big uh, th theme to explore on the grief uh, theme <clears throat> you know I think that what scares us the most as human being is death is the is the end of things it can be you know the end the death of a relationship or the death of a loved one in real uh, flesh and bone you know the death of uh, a job the death of a friendship the death of uh living in a place you know and having to move the death of a residential place that has held so much memory or whatever you know the the letting go the the moving on the uh, surrender, you know, the le moving forward and letting go of things. So this grief uh, uh, process, which can be, of course, the death of someone, uh, physical death, but also uh, in this case, that's what I'm looking at in the research. But, uh, but that, that, you know, letting go and dying is a process that happens in many different levels. And I think that in, uh, in psilocybin, in work, mushroom work, this this gets addressed, or I don't know if treated, I don't like to call it treatment, but like it gets addressed because um, in, in mushroom uh, um, uh, experience, we get to uh, feel the eternity of things. We get to feel that things don't really end. They end on a certain level, but not on another. Someone dies physically, but the spirit remains. Or, uh, you know, uh, a job is, is gone, but then we, we, we harvest all the beautiful things we learn in ourselves, uh, skills and empowerment uh, along the way of that job. So we move forward. There's a kind of an acknowledgement of what has been and then a moving forward for the next uh, phase. So there is a, a reconciliation of the dying pro with the dying process that I've seen. Um, I've worked with people, you know, uh, over the years, uh, you know, many people have come with me to Mexico who have lost people, right? Lost a parent, lost a child, lost a partner, or lost a friend, you know, in, through disease or accidents. And uh, 
invariably what they came out with was the fact that they had connected with that person or and, and they had felt like they were complete with their life and they were moving on and they they didn't have to feel a sense of loyalty by hanging on to the memory and the pain of it in order to feel connected, that they could honor the spirit of the person and, and move on with their own vitality, which was a great uh, celebration of this p- people life, really. Um, so th- there was this, uh, this completion process and this letting go of that burden uh, while celebrating life that was here now. Um, and I've seen that over and over again. I mean, parents coming to me like, I want to, I need to do that trip with you because my son died 15 years ago and I'm crippled. And I would take them and we would do the work and, um, or they would do the, the journey and come out with like 85% alleviation of, you know, this debilitating feeling. So it was very rewarding. And I agree with you. So I think that, uh, so to finish that, I, I, I feel like the process of grief is really well addressed in the mushroom uh, medicine because the mushroom itself has the, I've talked about that sometime, has the uh, propensity of, of teaching about impermanence, you know, how, um, you know, the mushroom is a very impermanent being. And so it comes and it goes and, you know, like that. It has a, it has a fundamental mycelial body. The mushroom itself it's very impermanent and it teaches that, you know, you come, you go, you hear, you go, you know, things happen, things finish. And so we absorb that when we take mushrooms, I believe, or the psilocybin. And so we absorb that principle, you know, that, that, that sense of, um, of impermanence. And we, we, we okay with that. We learn about it. We land into it. We rest into it and we understand it uh, intrinsically in our experience. The idea, and, and this it's interesting because this woman I was just mentioning who had the son who had died 15 years ago, recently uh, contacted me and wants to go back on a trip with me because, uh, because she felt like she had some another layer of grief that was there. So that connects with what you're saying about how things returned. And um, so I asked her, I said, I, I mean, how... I mean, considering where you were before the first journey, which was like a year and a half or two years ago, you know, and she said, oh, yeah, no, no, I was, I was, uh, I mean, it's 85% better. But now that I'm in my, in, in this different zone, I recognize that I could even here uh, alleviate some of that leftover uh, burden um, that it, it, it feels like a burden. It doesn't feel like just a good memory of my son. And so I said, okay, so we will go again and we will travel there and when it's possible and we will continue. 